cloud. Hey, welcome everyone. So yeah, let's dive into this. What's new in Gutenberg? This is going to be um, really interesting. For the first time in a bit, you all are my second session. Um, so I, hopefully I ironed out most of the kinks here. Um, but there's some exciting stuff in that has gone on last month. So we're going to just review those features and explore them in a sandbox session. And we'll review them as we're in the sandbox. So it'll be hand in hand there. So just really diving into it today, I want to share with you my setup um, using local, the latest version of Gutenberg, which is 15.1.0. Um, I put my theme here because you just need a theme installed, really. It, it's This session isn't really about the theme itself. Um, but then, yeah, also the latest version of WordPress as well is what we're playing with today. And then a couple other options. You, I should assume that you all have your own local setup, I guess, because you know we're talking about Gutenberg already installed. But in case you want other options for a local setup or a, um, a theme, a block theme, feel free to check some of these out. I just found this one yesterday called Upside Down, which is, is really interesting. It looks kind of like a newspaper um, setup. But yeah, let's get into it. Let's not waste time. So what we're going to do is I'll have, I'm going to unpin my site here. And this site is literally just a vanilla fresh install. Um, the only thing I've done here, we can visit the site. The only thing I've actually done here is install Gutenberg in the plugin. So that's installed, activated. We're ready to basically lock and load. Um, other things here though, that we can play with, of course, if you're in Gutenberg, we've got the experiments tab. So I believe this has been out for a while. The color randomizer, I personally haven't tested lately. So I think those could be some interesting things to just turn on while we're testing things out here. So I'm going to do that. And then to guide us in this, this journey here, um, let me unpin as well, the Gutenberg new tab. So as you all may know, Gutenberg has biweekly updates and they come out in this what's new in Gutenberg type post, which is why I mimic that in my title here. Um, and basically from the last two weeks, they'll share with you like what are the updates. Um, in this session today, we're going to just go through the user facing what you can do in the WP admin, but they also, if you're more develop developmentally focused, they also share with you um, things in the change log that you can um, check out and also things that you can do in a more developmental way with, with Gutenberg. We're not going to go through that today, but if that is something that interests you, I definitely um, want you to check that out. Okay, so starting just from the top here, they've got a couple of really interesting and fun updates from the last two weeks. Um, well, this is the 18th of January, so it's, it's been a bit. But one of them, this one isn't so much a showy thing. It's just talking about how the sidebar is getting more stable, which is great. We want a more stable sidebar. But something we can play with today is this new paste styles option um, that was added to block settings. This was really interesting. So I'm flipping back to my site now and I'm gonna just go to my hello world post. And essentially, let me open the list view so we can just keep track of things here. I'm gonna apply some kind of style to this paragraph. So let's do maybe, it's, well, it's not too jarring here, but some red text and a light gray background. So now this has a type of style, which I should, with this new feature, be able to just copy and paste to another block. So if we click on these three vertical dots, you see there's this copy styles option available. I'm going to do that. And let's 
some in a new block, maybe not a paragraph. How about a heading with a very catchy title? And now we'll go into the options of this block and paste styles is there. So there we go. That was easy. So I've got exactly what I wanted, that red font, a color and a gray background. Um, let's test out another block, maybe the list. Um, this is a list. So one thing with this that caught me up in my previous session is you can't do a individual list item with this copy or paste styles, I believe. Yeah. So you see here, it, I pressed that button, but it didn't do anything. I'm not sure if in the future, the hope or goal is that even with a list item, if I wanted to have different styles in each list item, which maybe could be interesting if you, you know, when you're in like an Excel spreadsheet and it has um, different backgrounds per row so that you can easier see the data easier, like maybe that would be a use case for this. Um, but as it is now, going to the top list block and then pasting the style seems to be the only way to, to do that at the moment. And then if I go into a next another another list item, that that style persists. So I found that to be pretty interesting. Um, it seems I'm not quite sure of the use case for this, <laughs> uh, unless you want to go against a global style setting for your block or your um, theme itself. But it would make it just faster to apply a certain global or a certain style to many blocks while you're in the editor. So that's, that's the thing. <laughs> As I'm going along, if you're like, Hey, destiny, that was too fast. Or, um, can I, can I see it like this? Like maybe with a different block, feel free to, to ask those kinds of questions. Okay. So Next on the list here, we have edit block style variations from global styles. So in a, what this is, is in a block that has variations, maybe a button image or site logo, it's now possible to change their styles via the global styles panel. So this one was also pretty interesting and it also tripped me up at first. Um, what we're gonna do now is, let me actually, I'll save and update my, my post here. I'm going to go back into the WP admin and the editor. And also, I'm assuming y'all have been playing with like this new experience in the editor where it's you go into another template and it, it's not like click link load, click link load. It, it's very seamless now. I'm very excited about this. I think it just feels much smoother. It keeps you in the zone. Um, and this is really, really nice. So I just wanted to point that out or just give it some, <laughs> some props <laughs> if you've already noticed that. But now in the, we're in the home page, the site editor here. And let's select something that should have a variation. So I'm going to go to this button here. And actually click the button. So what it's referring to for the style variation is when you're in the styles tab, there's outline or default, for example. So we're now able to uh, change and manipulate that, which is pretty interesting. If you want to have a more customized variation um, that isn't coded into your, your theme. So in order to get there, let us go to the global styles button up here. We're going to go to blocks and then let's play with our button. Probably went by it because B is before all those other letters. Okay, not buttons, but button. And then you see down here, style variations. So the only variation this one has right now is outline. So I'll click on that. And let's play around with it. So this is also really fun. The, the new border shadow stuff that you can play with. It, it really makes it feel so, okay. I'll do like a little radial here. 
so it's circular and we give it this shadow that feels so 90s <laughs> the 90s kid in me is just like whoa um but that's a variation that you can do now you can play with other types that also just feels so 90s um a bun variations here oh my gosh yeah we're getting into like some ms paint shadow business right now taking you way back uh let's do this non-filled one here so now we've got this shadow rounded button maybe we want to play with the colors too because i turned on in the experiments tab you know the color randomizer um now we can press this button which is right now only affecting the regular one so let's see here if i can change that's kind of interesting so because i don't have the variation selected over here we can't really see the edits to the colors and such so let me click back into my button here and get out of this global style this has now been updated i'm going to do a little save and let's get all the way back into here and i'm going to click outline and you can see in the preview too which is really nice when i hover over what oh i don't know why it's <laughs> going away so quickly but you should it should hold when you hover over and show you what's just happened but we can see the the outline variation that i was just playing with is now looking like like that so I think probably in the future, what could happen um, if you're a block theme creator, um, creating blocks for your, your customers, for example, you can supply your customer with like a bank of variations that they can just press and utilize on their site. Maybe these button variations follow their brand guidelines, for example, and they want to have four different types, but they, you know, have the brand colors, the smooth corners, if that's what their, their style is like. Um, so you can just very quickly add these, these variations for them, um, which is pretty interesting. And then if they wanted to, if, unless it's locked down, they could further adjust it themselves on the front end. So I'm going to jump back into the global styles here, blocks. Now that we have the variation open, I'm wondering, yeah, because we haven't set any colors, maybe that's why it's not doing much. But now that it's out there, let's see, that's not readable. Let's do that nice teal and then the text. I guess white would be a good choice there or light gray. This part, I didn't quite get this headings thing. Maybe this is something, if I had a heading in the button, it would do. But that's okay. We just wanted to play a little bit with the colors here anyway. And then I wanted to see. Yeah, so the randomizer doesn't seem to work on this variation itself, but maybe that's not the purpose here. Uh, but I would have assumed since it's here that my button color should be changing. And then there's other things we can do here and save. And then if we were to go back to settings here, not on buttons, but on my button, and then the switch, we've got those. So the default is affected by the global styles um, randomizer, it looks like, but not the outline. So maybe that's a to-do item. And there we go. If my uh, pop-up isn't freaking out anymore, you can see the, the previews there. So that's really interesting. Try selecting the button, not buttons. Oh, oh no, what did I do? Sorry, Jean, I need more context. I think I went over there. Was it for the- You had, you, yes, you were selecting the buttons yeah. when you were trying <laughs> to do the randomizer. So I just thought maybe if you just did the singular button, it could do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me see here. So I'm going to go back to global styles, button. And then the outline, colors, randomize. No, maybe I misheard what your your directions. No, that's what I meant. You're right; it doesn't okay. work. Uh, well, if you're you're developing Gutenberg, take a look at this. 
<laughs> or I could create a ticket. There's probably one open already. This is this this is why it's an experiment. You know, it's not going to apply properly to everything yet, um, but it's still fun to play with for the the default because it's working there. Um, but as it said in the, the notes here, you can work on this with your images, your site logo, anything that has, when you go into the settings, this styles area. So that's pretty, pretty nice on the fly changes to the style. So the next one isn't really something that's like super exciting to show in my opinion. I did add in this column before um, we could add an image. I believe what it's just trying to convey here, and let me add an actual image here. Got one plant picture lying around, so let's do that. Just for the sake of, of looking at this. So we have the image here, you'll see you have your style variations. This is something we can adjust in these new glo global style settings. But I believe what it was saying is that now you can't, this this darker blue container, you can't just stretch your image out of that. It'll stay within the the confines of what it's in, which isn't as as fun to look at. But the next one is <laughs> so this one, the new sticky position block support. I was like clapping, snapping for this in the previous session because it's basically going to allow everyone to very easily without a plugin create a sticky header or a sticky menu, which is probably what 90% of the internet in my mind wanted all along. <laughs> I, I don't know why it took so long, but now it's available to you. And one thing that you have to keep in mind when you're playing with this feature is that like, for example, if I want this header here, this template part header, I need to group it first to apply this, oops, the setting to it. So I'm going to grab it here. We're going to group it. And then now in the settings right-hand sidebar, there's a position option. And I can set this to sticky. So now when we're scrolling down the page, look at that. It's going with it. So... I was screaming happily for this because I just know there's so many people that <laughs> struggle with a sticky menu and it shouldn't be a struggle. Um, it's a very popular design choice to have for some sites. Um, but yeah, you can stick, I think I'm doing something interesting there. There you go. You can choose to stick anything. It doesn't have to be the header. Um, it could be a header and a, an image. I would have to see more use cases for that, but I think the most popular one is definitely the header being stuck there, or at least the menu. So now at a very quick flick of the position, you can do that for, for your sites going forward. So some other notable highlights in this recent release we kind of saw when we were in the site editor. So I'm gonna go back out and, oh, it's doing it today. It wasn't doing it the other session. Maybe they heard me or maybe <laughs> it wasn't selecting, but now you can, if you wanna go this far, while you're in the admin area of the design templates and template parts section, you can move this around to your liking even though, oh, no, it is cool. Yeah, there must have been something off with my test site before, because when I was doing this before, the sticky might not have been staying. But yeah, this, I guess you can very quickly move it to mobile, tablet view, just in this area without jumping into the page itself yet. And then another thing I had enabled, just in case some folks haven't played with it before, in the experiments tab is that zoomed out option up here, the zoom out view. So this is something that's nice for just seeing the full desktop version of your site. And I say that because if I switch this to mobile, you have this kind of already quote unquote zoom out view. But if I click on the zoom out view here, it's just going to get me back to the desktop version. So I'm not sure if there is 
there are plans to have a zoom out view for mobile and tablet. Maybe not because when you click on view, it's zoomed out anyway in this regard, but <clears throat> that's just the option there and what it'll do. Okay, so the remaining items here, pardon me. Yeah, I got like a scratchy morning breath still, <laughs> a morning throat, so sorry. Um, are more just keyboard shortcuts. So if that's something interesting to you, I would definitely recommend you to give those a try. And then we start getting into the change log here. So that is a good moment to share with you. Uh, a couple good links here. So if you're interested in more developmental things with Gutenberg, I definitely recommend you to check out the change log, see what's happening, check out all the issues. This is all living within the Gutenberg's GitHub repo. And I'll get a direct link to the issues as well. So you can see what has been updated and link back to an issue of interest to you, um, make comments, help develop it further if you are a developer. Um, and then in the issues section itself, you'll be able to see what's going on here too, whether it's an enhancement. You can also file a new issue as you're playing around. If you see anything, any bugs, an, enha an enhancement you would like to request. Um, definitely search first in case someone else has thought of it, but um, just know that you are just as able to contribute to this experience as you are to just use it. Okay. So that was from the past two weeks. Oops, we're going to go back here. And let's go a little bit further back to the 4th of January. What's new in Gutenberg? This one has a couple of interesting user-facing ones as well, <clears throat> which I wanted to go through together. So we have this push block changes to global styles option now, which is under the advanced panel for individual blocks. So, and let me read this too. So this allows users to make changes while editing a template in the site editor, but apply those changes on a global level. So we wanna be back in the site editor here. Um, let's make a change maybe to this heading, for example. Um, I'm gonna do a style change here. Let's do, <clears throat> let's get a little wild here. I'm gonna do a gradient background. very quickly. Bam. We have our text, which probably shouldn't deviate too much from a dark color. And I don't know, maybe change the typography a little bit. Uh, let's make this the italic. Should we play with the margins? Maybe less bottom. Let's play with the case structure. Okay, so now that I have done all of this work on this individual block while in the site editor, if I open advanced in the settings here, you can see there's this button apply globally. And before I do that, let's open up, oops, let's open up the site editor or the site dashboard once more and look at my page. So I have a heading, we played with this heading. So this is a post we were playing with before. And what should happen after I press this button is whatever settings I've applied to this heading should apply to this heading as well. So let's apply globally and I'm gonna save. And let's refresh and see if it now has that groovy gradient background on this heading. 
in a black text. So the text is not black. And this is something I was wondering if I just change this to, because in this post, this is a H2. So I was curious if that mattered. So I'm going to change this one to H2 and save. And then, yeah, so it looks like not. And if we go down to the comments, we can see that this heading is playing correctly. It has black text um, and the background just like that. So I'm not sure why the text isn't changing on, or the text color isn't changing on that. It could just be that this feature is still under construction. And I'm gonna, please don't mind the absurdity of having that white color, but I want to, sorry, apply globally and then save. And then just see if that has any effect. No. So I was noticing this too in my other session that, and I just did a hard refresh just in case it's the cache, um, that the text color of the comments wasn't changing either. So Margaret says the text color isn't changing because I had customized the text color on the page itself earlier. You know, let's, you're probably right. Let me test that out. So I'm going to edit the post and I'm going to remove. So the background still changed, which is kind of interesting, right? So in this theory, why did the background change, but not the, um, the text color? So I'm going to turn that off. And for the sake of things, I'm going to turn this off too. And we can see here that the update, this didn't like change to that awful white text color <laughs> in the styling I had. It's similar to the comments. So I'm actually curious, this might be because I'm on, I'm not on a pay, a post template when I'm making these edits. It's, a, it's either broken or I'm not on a post template. So we can test this out really quick, quickly, just in case that's the issue here. Um, I'm going to go to a single post. And yeah, let's, let's play with this, this heading here and see if this will do what we hope it does. So I'm going to, I know, I'm sorry, I'm going to make this way. And then let's do that gradient background again in some form. Okay. And then I'm going to save and I should have pressed that apply globally button. There we go. Back into the settings. Let's do apply globally, save, save. And then if I go back to my post, Aha. So I don't know if that's a, a bug. If I'm editing not on the template itself, because it's still, you know, it's still applied to the background. So this is probably still under uh, construction here, but it does look like going into the post template and editing there, then applying globally you know, made the changes we were hoping to see, even to the title for some reason. This is, I guess because it's a H1. So it applied it to that heading as well. Okay. So that is very interesting. I guess it would be useful as well. It's kind of like the pace styles in a different way, uh, functionality. So I'm still curious about the use case for that. And if you all have an idea, like I would love to understand it a bit better um, versus just creating the global styles for your headings um, across the site versus on a specific page or pose. So this one isn't so flashy either, but now the page list block, you can essentially uh, adjust the typography for it. Um, we can very quickly go and look at this. So I'm going to pull up a page list. Damn, and I only have one page, so this isn't going to be super exciting. 
But now when I'm selecting it, we have some typo uh, typography features we can play around with. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it all on, get wild here. Um, and we can play with the case, the line height, that is something you are into adjusting um, the appearance. I feel like this is a feature where it's like, if you didn't care about it before, <laughs> this isn't much of an update, but if you're someone that plays with the page list or uses it on their site, um, then now this is gonna be a really exciting feature for you. Probably if I had more pages, it would be more exciting to share. So maybe in another one, I can make sure to have more of those. But yeah, that's that's now available to folks. Ah, so this one is very interesting as well. Uh, it's supposed to help folks, you know, who are still using classic themes, keep moving toward a transition to a block theme. Um, specifically, if you have a sidebar, we all want to protect our sidebars on our sites. We love them. Um, so what this feature is going to allow you to do <clears throat> is uh, when inserting a new template part into a template in the site editor, you can now import widgets from a previously registered Dynamics sidebar. So it's a tra transitioning tool to help users from classic theme setups to blocks without losing the work that they put into their beautiful sidebars. So this one, I'm going to show the video. It's, oops, I feel like I didn't go full screen here because I don't have all the pieces to make this happen. But essentially, if you had a widget sidebar, you can import it into your, your site while editing. And I think here there's some extra steps you have to take. I can at least show like the import functionality, but I was definitely not pre prepared with a classic site theme to like import that. So um, I'll share at least where to access this, this functionality within the site editor. So what you would need to do and I'm going to get out of the single page and into the home. List view. Um, and I'm going to go right above the footer. Insert before. And what you need to basically have set up here is a template part. And once this is here, we can go into um, advanced. And if I had had that, um, what it was saying here, this previously registered dynamic sidebar, which we see on this page, there's this specific page widget areas that I just don't have access to right now. Um, what would show up is ability to import that sidebar or template part. So I think what, probably I needed is the um, template parts plugin. And then it would allow me to do this. But this area is here. It's just blank because I don't have the required bits. But once you, if you are transitioning from a classic theme to block theme, um, that's how you would import it. So these shadow presets and minimum fluid font size, we played with that a little bit when we were on the style variations for the buttons, but this can be really fun and exciting just to give you a bit more design choice. Um, this is now available in the theme.json file. So any theme creators can add that capability now to their, their block themes. I didn't see this evaluation uh, elevation high and low though. So might have to play with the drop shadow a bit more. So the other notables they wanted to share in this update, um, the new site site editor, sorry, the new site editor sidebar. That's a mouthful, um, which we've been noticing, right? As we go through this like new beautiful fluid area. Um, yeah, I approve this update. 
and then going into the change log again. So those were basically the more user backend focused updates from the past month that I wanted to share. If there is a feature that I didn't go over and you all, you all are like, I want to see it, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I do want to share with you this article, which most of you have may have seen recently, talking about the end of phase two uh, Gutenberg project development. So phase two was, you know, easier editing out of all of the phases. And phase three will launch the start of um, multi multi collab. So, you know, imagine Google Docs, where you're all on a doc together with your team or your your uh, coworkers, um, but in WordPress itself. So multiple people on a post editing a post um, at a time, uh, at the same time is the next step in this phase. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and we're in this post, they just, they just discuss like, what's the last things that are going to take us over to the top of that hill so that we can go on to the, the multiple collaboration aspect. So definitely give this post a read. It's giving you insight into all of the great work that has led us to this point. Um, and there's already a lot of opinions as well in the comments. So add yours as well. Um, but yeah, let me know what you all think of like what we went through. I, some highlights for me are definitely how the navigation sidebar works. It's just so smooth now. I just feel like I'm not being taken out of the experience while in the site editor because before it was like, click load. Now I'm here, click load. Now I'm here. And now it's just super seamless, which I think is a, a really great um, enhancement for, for the site editor itself. And you'll see here, they're just going to keep going with these nice updates. It feels a little Apple-like to me. I feel like I'm in the app store. <laughs> I don't know if anyone feels that way, I guess, you know, especially with these colors, but you know, whatever makes it a more smooth experience for people. I'm, I'm very happy about that. yeah any questions things you want to go over again things you're like hey I, I know this wasn't on the list from the past two weeks but I would love to see this demonstrated Jean asks if there's any news about fluid typography. And I'm like, I'm going to just cheat here <laughs> and type in fluid or typography. Not in this post, but let me go to the new. So. This is, I think, a theme.json update, right? Adds fluid field inside settings.typography. This is part of the latest update that we were going through. So that is new. If you would like to check that out within the theme.json file itself, I'm just going to grab that. And... The shadow presets, this was in the, the last one we did, went through, fluid font size. You know, fluid font size, yeah. So this is still related to the shadow presets. Oh yeah, the support in fluid font size. So yes, these are some updates here. Settings.typography.fluid, minimum font size. So this is a new setting that gives developers more control over how fluid typography is handled. And this is a different issue. So I'm going to grab this too. They usually in the issues have 
uh, screenshots and um, which you can follow along the way too. So even if you're not um, into looking into the theme.json file, I think with the screenshots and the, the little videos, it's easier to see like, oh, okay, this update is what they're referring to um, in a visual level. And I think we could go further down. Yeah, so there's a global style fluid typography update as well. And this is still within, yeah, that last month of work. So I'm just going to keep sharing. <laughs> Bookmark it. Oh, that's the same one. <laughs> I'm so silly. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> I should have read the number. Um, and then going down, someone's just called fluid dot. And I don't know how far down this one is. This is pretty far down. So that is from November 2020, 2022. So we probably, um, Jean, in the last four months have have seen this. Um, that was, I think that was the introduction, actually, of it. So since then, those are the latest two. Um, so Larry's asking, is anyone else having issues with the parallax cover block setting? Mine has quit working with the latest update to Gutenberg. Huh. So I'm like, I don't see anything mentioning parallax. So let's go into the cover. Oops. Did I say something here. I'm going to go into a page. So let's open a cover block. And I'm just going to make it here. So where could I find that setting, Larry? Maybe I'm just unfamiliar with that phrasing. Okay, so we're, I'm selecting the cover. Here's the settings of the block. Under gear icon, thank you. So here, I've selected the cover. Hmm. That's not showing here. Maybe. Well, let me, I do have some experiments on. Let me just turn those off. I don't think they would turn off a setting, but just in case, you never know. Let's troubleshoot a little. I'm gonna go back into my page, restore my cover block and select cover. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I understand what you mean now. Okay. Are you talking about the, this setting, the change content position. No, okay. <laughs> You're like, no. Oh, wait, let me, let me grab an image. Oh my gosh. Here we are. And then an opening advanced. It's right there, fixed background. Is this what you're looking for, Larry? Yes, but it, the parallax has quit working. You can check that box and mm -hmm. it's not working on any of my websites now. It's quit working. When you scroll down and it, the picture stays where it's supposed to see, it's not working. The parallax isn't working. 
Hmm. Now maybe I don't know if you have to go to full screen or not. You shouldn't. I mean full width. Full height. Yeah, full height, full width, but so I I'm so sorry. I'm like, when you say parallax, what is what are you expecting to see? I'm the, learning some new phrasing here. Apologies. Well, the fixed background, the when once you set that background, it's supposed to stay as you scroll up, like your sticky header, but with mm -hmm. that cover image, it stays in place. So it becomes a background without actually changing the background. And it can even be used on featured images or anything else as long as it's inside your cover block and, and that fixed background is checked. But it has quit working. It's not even working for you. So, so it doesn't do anything now. So is it that you're expecting to see when you scroll down that the image moves with your scrolling? No, the image does not move. Does not That's move. It's called okay. fixed background. Yeah. And it's not working even for you either. So I'll okay. dig into GitHub issues and see if somebody's. Uh, it's doing this. Well, now it's working there, but it won't work on my, it's not working on my front pages. Hmm. So it looks like it's not working in the page itself. Well, it's not showing that effect. Well, and it, oh, yeah. see, it, it was but, working even in the editor, but it mine's uh, not in the editor or in the page. Okay. So, yeah, have have a look there. Um, well, yeah, this I'll is look some, at issues and yeah. get a chance to dig into that. Because this is like a literally fresh install. I don't know if you have like other plugins or stuff that you're playing around with as well, um, but maybe. It's just on my development side, it's using local. Yeah. So, where I'm building some websites. So they put that had quit working on me. But I may need to yeah. do a fresh, fresh new install and start over and see what happens. Okay. Well, okay. thank you for playing with that. At least I can see that it is work, does work. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Also, like I'm like, I learned a new word and this is what I meant to convey, but this is like I'm a learn by seeing type person. So I'm like, okay, we're we're on the same page. <laughs> Well, yeah, me too. I'm I'm a learn by breaking person. So. I love that learn by breaking. Thank you. Of course, thank you. Did we have any other questions or things that might not be working on your end that you want to see test out on this site? And this is to the the whole group here. If not, I'm going to leave you with some more links <laughs> to follow if you so desire. Um, yeah, I sent you already that page for the finale, which sounds like it should be sad, but it's great that we're, we're moving on. The things are being done that folks said they that would get done. Um, and then shared with you already the issues, releases. Definitely try to follow this. Gutenberg new tag. Oh, thank you, Jean. I'm glad you like, I was trying something different. I'm glad you all stayed along for this ride um, and explored with me. I always enjoy learning something new with you all. Um, but these, this Gutenberg new tag is where you'll see those, those posts that we went through today. And there should be a new one coming out because it's bi-weekly, I think next week. And also, just the Gutenberg tag in general, you're going to see more updates. There was one actually just yesterday. Um, oops. I can paste properly um, from Bergetz that has uh, more information about 6.2, which is coming in a month. Oh my goodness me. And some more updates around Gutenberg navigation block being another big overhaul that's being undertaken. And then of course we have our handy dandy support forums for questions if you get stuck. Um, but of course, too, if you know what you're looking for, you can comment on the issues. Uh, like Larry, you're like, hey, this isn't working in this setting, let's try to figure that out. I'm sure the um, developers will be very helpful in that case as well. 
Okay. So that's all I've got for today. Thank you for hanging with me. I'm glad you had fun. I'm always like nervous introducing something <laughs> new and different like this. Uh, so I appreciate you all for your kindness and, and learning attitude. Um, we also have the survey, if you haven't filled it out already, called the Individual Learner Survey. It's about five to seven minutes of your time, but it's essentially just asking um, from learners such as yourself, how can we better the content on Learn WordPress for you all? Um, so your input will be very, very helpful in helping us shape and create better content for learning more about WordPress. So if you have a moment, we'd appreciate you taking that as well. And then if you want to connect with me, here's the places to find me. I'm always happy to keep chatting about WordPress in any form. I'm going to stop my share. Thank you all for attending. I'll stop our recording and send that over.